Good morning, Amit. Mani, it's uh -huh. so strange to keep speaking about myself. I've never thought of myself that way. <laughs> but I'm ready to answer any question. Well, uh, we wanted to ask you about your earliest recollections with your family, your mother and father. Oh, my earliest yes, recollections. And how you came here, how they came here. Oh, that's long back. <clears throat> um, they knew about the ashram since I was a little girl of three. They used to have a correspondence with Nolinida. At that time, Nolinida was the secretary. And um, we were in Myanmar, Rangoon. And um, at that time already, I had seen my parents meditate one hour a day. And I was a little girl. And so at the dining table, there was a special step up chair for me to sit on. <laughs> so I would reach the rest. And <clears throat> uh, they were, and I noticed that at dining time, at dinner time, we were not supposed to speak because just before that they had meditated and come. So when they were meditating for about an hour or so, my brother and sister used to do their homework in, in the landing on the first floor of the house. Now I had not yet been to school, I was just three, but I wanted to write. So I asked my mother for a thick bound notebook, which she always gave to my brothers. They were good students. I said, I want a bound notebook. And she said, what for? I want to write. And she gave me the notebook. And then after a few days, she asked me, have you written? Yes, I have written. And she opened the page and she showed me here, so I remember when I was about 25 years old, she said, you see, I kept your book. It was a uh, bound notebook, and line by line, I have put circles. I was imagining that I was writing. <laughs> and um, I insisted on going to school, and luckily there was a Montessori school right next door. So they sent me there. And um, my sister Chichadi, who had already studied, um, needed a little more coaching in English because the school we would be sent to, English was the medium. It was 1937, 38. So when I went there, and uh, the first work they gave me, was to string a few beads. And uh, the lady in charge um, left a few beads, wooden beads in front of me and gave me a wire. I remember this work. I don't remember any other thing that I had done there because she had commented on my choice. I sat there and I strung them on too. And when the lady, she was a Bengali lady, we used to call her also Miss Sen, but the lady in charge was an English woman. She said, uh, Miss Bhutan, see what she has done at this age. And I had put the, <clears throat> I had strung the wooden beads in order of sides. They were of different sizes. And over and above that, she thought, that the color was matching, that they were of different colors, the color was matching. So she was very impressed. I remember only her remark. That is my earliest um, memory of um, Rangu, Myanmar, when I went to school and my parents had um, a very busy schedule because uh, my father was an auditor 
um, had to go to office. Um, he was the equivalent to Auditor General of the Railways, but he was called Deputy Auditor General of the Railways because the first position had to be occupied by an Englishman. But he it is who did all the jobs of touring and inspecting different places. So I had just learned addition. And from school, um, the driver used to take us to my father's office. We would wait there when he would finish his work, and then we would come. That day it so happened I was there on my own. Chitradi may have come back already, I don't remember. Uh, so he rang that table bell. You know, there used to be a bell. You struck it and it made ting. And the uh, porter, the boy, uh, office boy, the Chaprasi would come in and he gave a file to the Chaprasi. I was very interested in that bell. So I put my hand, but it was too small. It wouldn't, it wouldn't ring. So my father across the table held my hand and rang the bell for me. And uh, the Chaprasi came in running. So my father said, no, it's just, um, they used to call the younger children, girls of the house, Mishri Baba. Huh? Baba for, you say in Hindi very often, no? Mm. And Miss, so they would say Missy Baba. So, no, it was only Missy Baba who wanted to try this. And the porter laughed and went out. Mm. But then I kept watching and uh, I asked Nanesha, what are you doing? He had a long register sort of thing. He would put his pen there and he would go down and he would write something. He said, I'm doing it. I'm adding all this. I was so astonished that a whole register full of numbers he had only to put his pencil on the first line and then write up and he would do the addition. He was very good at mathematics when he passed out of his college. So I was really thunderstruck. And then um, I skip into our school. Neroda was our French language teacher. So one day one essay he asked us to write, Chimere d'enfance, Chimeras of our childhood. So I, my starting point was that I wanted to be a mathematician. <laughs> so Niroda had a good laugh. And um, um, because I, I my, my, um, Argument was that all around me, I saw people who were reading and doing maths. So, um, maths had to be the height of your <laughs> intelligent subject. So I want to do maths. But gradually my taste changed and um, they were very lenient and very understanding as you see. In Rango, my mama, my mother and used to always go to the Ram Krishna mission. And there was they they would go for meditations and all that and special sessions. So one year when everyone of the family was uh, out of station, I think, I went with my mother and she went on through a back door. And standing at the back door, I saw the pujari do a puja arati. I was, that was the first time that I understood that we could invoke a higher power. I was so very charmed by that movement 
and you know they did arati and in the hand they had this bell so the two things had to go in a different rhythm after i started dancing i have tried it but i have never succeeded very well then he came this to our side of the back door and he gave some prasad for us to uh, to partake and my mother i did like my mother cut the prasad and had it then we, he came he looked and he found that we were still waiting there so he asked my mother what is it she said she wants a little more prasad <laughs> but that was the first time i saw this puja and a genuine one there was no uh, and i understood that that was a very memorable experience and my parents were very interested in historical places and especially they wanted to know more about the buddha and his first disciple ananda and um, uh, rangoon was full of pagodas <laughs> and we used to go to um, a lake called the royal lake it was really um, i don't know how do you say connected with the bay of bengal the sea so it was blue and we went on sundays off and on for swimming the others went for swimming to a lake called kakain lake it was a little muddy on the edges but very clean and neat there was also a diving board in the middle a structure which you could climb and dive from so my question was why is the royal lake blue and the other one not blue now well, they said this is the reflection of the sky it is a big i couldn't understand more than that but uh, there was uh, the famous pagoda of rangoon was right near called shweda gon pagoda I have recently done from memory a sketch of it of that day when we saw three monks going up into the pagoda. I show it to you sometime. Mm. And I was very um, impressed by my mother's answer to my question. that they were the monks were going and they were doing their prayers at the same time so that was something that struck me and uh, the golden tin golden pagoda of shweta gon pagoda and its reflection on the water is something else that i mean i could never forget so both well i mean my parents were very open to uh, religion and beauty of nature so one day when i was in the car with my mother and uh, we were just crossing a by lane uh, uh, one side the um, the side which had a pavement on the right hand side where there were trees it was like an avenue then one hawker women woman the bunnies are very tip top you know they have a very strikingly colored lungi the ladies women mostly in brocade and they have a top which is very thin and flimsy organdy white and the speciality is the buttons you had to have buttons in 
in jade, in uh, precious stones, you know, and cufflinks like things also of precious stones. And that was a speciality. I noticed on the street a lady standing on a small stool like that high and with an attendant, her hair loose falling beyond the stool onto the ground. I just stayed and my mother told me that special uh, feature of the hairdo was to have a bun in the middle and wind all that hair around like a um, top hat, you know. It looked round like that. And on that they would wear a flower. And that day when I was going in my car with her, she said, see, even the Hakka woman, there was a Hakka woman going with a basket of fruits or something, she put her basket down, we were in the car. We were uh, just crossing her. She went down, picked up this um, grass, you know, this grass flower we call humility. Some grass flower and some wild flower and put it in her hair. So my mother said, see how, how they can understand what is beautiful. And that I remembered always. And those were my special memories of the of the past. Um, How old were you then? Uh, five or six. Five or six. So you came here when you were seven. Seven. When did your parents know about Sri Aurobindo or mother? I'm not sure when, but in Rangoon, as I said. There already they had Sri Bindo's books, whichever book was published. And I know that um, uh, National Value of Art and National System of National Education, I think these two books were published and I all love and death, maybe. Because I remember and I had kept for a long time those first copies which had always a very dark blue cover, you know, dark blue cover with golden um, lettering. So I had seen all their books were labeled, they were voracious readers, both of them, and uh, they had whole sets of books and I was uh, very interested in books right from my childhood because of that. Over there, I could read a lot. Mm. Were any of the books autographed by Sri Aurobindo? Do you recall? I told, I gave you one. I showed you one. No? Yes, yes. The, the other small day. Small one, yes. Small one. Uh, Thoughts and glimpses. Right. I have another one. Um, not last poems. What is the eight poems? Oh. We were learning by heart Sri Aurobindo's Musa Spiritus and uh, it was an opening to me because I was very young, I was about eight, there was no school still, or maybe nine. Um, and I asked my, my teacher, what does it mean, tiger stripe? of virtue and sin. So he said, how are tiger stripes? Black and so virtue and sin. So that is the first image that entered my head, that there can be imagery in poetry. Tiger stripes of virtue and sin. Oh. And the sound of the of English poetry came home to me through another poem. I couldn't trace it. I traced it long ago once, but then I again lost touch. Mm. It ended, I am the captain of my fate. I am the, no, I am the, and 
I am the maker, I am the captain of my fate. I am the the pilot of my soul or something like that. It had struck me very much. Because of the imagery of darkness. I remember another line. Dark as the night from pole to pole. That is another line. I've forgotten the poem. I knew it quite well. That's the first time I was struck by the sound of the language in poetry. Did you meet some of the uh, early ashram poets like Harindranath Chattopadhyay? That much later when I was much older. But Sri we started learning right from our childhood. And um, we used to recite uh, in the classroom also. I told you about that Bhaji Prabhu text in the classroom. Mm. But we had done also the poem Who. Mm. And um, and actually, we wrote what we thought, what we understood about the lines from time to time. And um, for French, I started learning French before the school started. Actually, there's a story about French. I didn't know anything about the French language or there existed any language. We were at school in Lahore at that time and we were coming out of our section, I think our singing section, to the boarding where we were staying for some time. And I said, what is that class going on after school hour? They said French. And immediately, spontaneously, a child of six, I said, I want to learn French. <laughs> so when we came here in 1942, we had um, some classes, but I don't think we had started French there. I'll have to look up the notebook. No, I think it was after that. In 1942 or 43, 43 must be, the, there was a gentleman here who was uh, mother's, um, a mother's uh, architect, so to say. The one for, uh, who was in charge of house maintenance and everything, um, Chandulal. You know Vasudha Ben, her yes. elder brother. He, had, he was bearded like that, small, uh, short hair like that. He spoke French very well. So suddenly mother asked, her, asked him to teach French. And he had time only on Sundays. So between uh, 2 and 3 or 3 and 4, he used to hold classes. And um, I started attending that class and uh, mother herself would set a sentence from her book, Words of the Mother, in French as handwriting. So we had a handwriting book and mother would give the style in which we had to write, either cursive, joint handwriting, or print, or capital. And we had to write the same sentence three times, just one page. My mother herself would sign it. And I, I have the book, I show it to you. Mm. So at that time, one day I had a peculiar idea. At 3 p.m. Sundays, or soon after that, mother used to come to the balcony on the Rue saint in the afternoon to look at the at the cows and the, uh, uh, to our new dairy, uh, uh, 
the new the dairy was just starting and mother would look at the animals and we used to rush from our class to see mother on the balcony looking at the animals and um, then one day I had an idea I told General Alji we are learning one sentence from the mother why can't we recite to her from the street so he asked mother the mother approved of it and so the sentence we learned we went there and two others joined me not the whole class we said the sentence so one day we had chosen the sentence from a book where she has quoted from the bible c'est ici la maison de dieu et moi je ne le savais pas here is the house of god and i didn't know it so we naturally changed the i into us so we said c'est ici la maison de dieu et nous nous ne le savions pas and when we recited that from the street mother looked at us and said maintenant vous le savez now you know <laughs> So, and all this was happening with Shirobindo in the room. Shirobindo was in his rooms, and and I think she, he had pointed out that day when we recalled that incident. I, I was told that he had said, "See how happy she is." Mother said, "Man, now we know something." Another day, we had chosen a sentence which was a little too long for us. We were just learning French, and after, so I told I told Chandralalji I would keep the book in hand um, because I was also a little afraid that I might forget. So we started all right very boldly, and then I got confused, and believe it or not. Mother started prompting from the balcony. Oh. <laughs> it was her sentence. The so mother started prompting and saying with us the sentence from the balcony while we <laughs> looked. And These uh, treasures of, <laughs> of mother's interaction with you are so valuable to all of us. Yeah, I did all the children of that time. She had something or the other which was different. Mm -hmm. Very rare recollections, huh? very rare memories. Yeah. So, Kevin, such things come to my mind about the Balkan. No, it is all things. part of the... Yes. ...of your body, memory. You can't forget such things. And your parents? first visit to the ashram? Was in 1939. Ah, 1930. before they took you? No, he, we came in 1940. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I thought of keeping a photograph ready. At that time, um, when they had come, when my father, no, Nishan had come first. Uh, mother knew that he was uh, an officer in the British, uh, whatever. So mother was a little on the safe, uh, kept on the safe side. Mother didn't, you know, there had been a lot of spying and all that of Shirobind. So mother gave, asked him to stay in the, in one of the hotels here. It is, I think it was called the Grand Hotel. But afterwards on seeing his sincerity and his, this thing, um, his honest approach to sadhana. And mother, uh, next when he came with my mother, 1939, later on, uh, Junjun Bode used to be uh, like a guest house and rented, I think, by the mother if there were more people for that. So they had stayed there. And my mother's most precious personal memory of that time about uh, people was Pranabha's uncle. We used to call him Motakaka, you know. He was quite stout. He was 
in charge of the reception for quite some time. He it is who started the reception uh, work in the ashram. And um, he was a visitor at that time. Then my mother said, well, people had just enough for when they were on a visit. Ashram was not so opulent at that time. And um, people used to have a kuja full of water. They, they would go and fetch the water from the filter, either in, from the filter in the ashram or the filter in um, what is children's boarding now. It, we used to call it Benjamin's place because a French national, Benjamin, had taken up the job of repairing shoes and, uh, and sandals. So it used to be uh, there. Before it became near the volleyball ground, we used to call Govida Raju. So there, there used to be a filter. So one of the two places we got our... Whenever we, we were to come, the arrangement of the ashram was such that the room chosen by the mother would be spotless clean and there was a furniture service. Everyone would, visitor would have a table a clothes rack or something like that, and a chair. Um, rarely perhaps a cupboard or something like that. Um, and uh, what I was uh, saying is that when my mother came with, uh, with my father and Motakaka was there, suddenly one day he came up the stairs of this, what is now Junjun Bodhi, saying, Iladi, you will need this more than I do. He had a very strange type of, there were clothes uh, hanging, you know, which you could fold and you open, they became squares, hinges, and you could hang on the, so something like that was given her and she was very impressed. She said, they are um, so considerate, everyone in the Asha. And I was a little girl in Lahore, and uh, she didn't uh, think I would understand everything, so she described that time's dining room. So she said, it is all spotless clean, and you go with the dish, and uh, the service is like that, and everyone's sugar, is in a tin. I didn't know tin at that time. I used to imagine, uh, my mother said everyone's weekly sugar is kept on a rack with the name. So now we use porcelain uh, sugar uh, things with two handles on either side. So in my child's imagination, I saw such porcelain sugar things with the name. But when we came first into the dining room, I had, that was the first shock I had. Oh, what shall they are in tins like this? And it was quite um, um, an experience because I started, very soon I started working in the dining room within a few years when we were here. And uh, I was asked by mother to do wiping in the afternoons. After that, I had to arrange the tiffin carriers in order. I think I told you about it. No? Work, I told you about it. I wanted to ask you if you had a photo of your... Huh? Do you have any photos of your parents? I had photos of, uh, of that time. I left to sort out a little mm. bit. I've kept them together. I was looking for it today, but I couldn't quite find. I kept two, two of my mothers that I found. Mm. 
here Nanushan with Parichand who oh. had, their, had their birthday on the same day. Oh. So mother used to give a bouquet of flowers. This is Nanushan with Parichanda. Very rare because there are so few photos of Parichanda. I think I saw it. Just there. Underneath, underneath that last one. Which one? Underneath the last one, I think I saw two photos. Right. Next. 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 That is Shitra Gish. Ah, oh. That okay. is Shitra Gish. Oh, okay. This is Shitra Gish. This is. Ah, yes. See? This is a little town. This is my mother. Just before she came here in 1940, 39. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I should, I'll keep something else ready next time. Mm. When um, my, you had to write a letter, and give a photograph of yours if you wanted to come to the ashram. So my mother had written her letter in Bengali to Nolinita because they were in correspondence. So when Nolinita took my mother's letter to mother, mother took the letter in her hand and said, surely she can come. Someone who has such a beautiful hand has control over her vital. So I wanted to show the handwriting uh -huh. a little bit. And um, so. Did your parents talk to you about the darshans with Sri Aurobindo and Mother? No, I think they left it to us to have our own, own approach and experience. The first year when we had come in 1940, we used to see the mother thrice a week. Mother didn't, uh, mother came out for general blessings, but especially we used to see thrice a week. And um, it was a treat. And um, mother referred to something in the Wednesday class. And much later, after the Wednesday class, I came back to the house and I said, I, I, I think she was thinking of me as a child because I had taken some flowers for her. And when we were going up the stairs, I said, oh, the flowers are drooping. And then by the time I reached her, the flowers were fresh. So I didn't know if there's any other action behind it, but mother had spoken of it, that yes, uh, yes. some people have that rapport with nature and that life energy, which gives uh, even to a drooping flower uh, freshness. And there are others who always come to her with flowers which are wilting. And that means that energy of the flower is taken away by the hand, you know, that is holding. So... Would you show us some of the pictures of uh, your house? <laughs> yeah. This house, we are staying here since um, 1941. Mm. Every time we came, we came and stayed here on the first floor. And this is the inside staircase. So, this is that lovely view from the balcony, <laughs> where we are right here. Top, yes, right here. 
Uh, when, uh, when we had first come, I was eight years old, April 1941. And we house. were shown this very house. This very house upstairs only was kept for us from then on. So we were coming, mm, two, two sadaks would receive our every visitor at the station and guide you in, the, in a rickshaw usually to the rooms mother had uh, fixed for you. And they would um, show you in and everyone's room, when mother chose a room for the visitor, had an animal dish with a kuja full of drinking water and a glass ready for the person. Everything's wrapped in clean. And that's what I noticed the first time we came to the house. Um, we were on our way, my mother and I, and I forget who was there, and I was given the key of the house. It was long like that, and I could hardly hold it. It was so heavy. Um, then uh, I could only put it into the keyhole. I couldn't turn it. So the sada turned it from me and I entered and I was really surprised because till then I had always seen a house where the main house is entrance gate and house and here it was on the left side. So I said to the house is on this side and I ran in. The extra veranda was not there at that time, there was only one. And I climbed and they said, this is the staircase. I ran up and I came up till here and I said, oh, it doesn't continue. <laughs> it doesn't go on. <laughs> at that time, Sri from his room said, you like the house? And I said, yes, of course. <laughs> so the house was chosen and... Um, Did mother visit here? Yes, mother visited here in 1954. Uh, there are any uh, photos of the mother? No, visited? no. In 1954 we had the whole house and um, Nani Sen used to work on the references to the uh, scriptures, to the Veda or the Upanishads or the Gita in the book Lysifai and he was making a, a, an index of it which Puraniji also made afterwards mm -hmm. and mother was very interested in that work which he, he was doing so the downstairs oh, hall which we use afterwards for our dining the one which is used for Albert for his main work it was his study with a huge table and um, mother was very interested in that work he was doing. Uh, so the whole house was actually full of studies, so to say. Everyone was studying, everyone was studying. And um, when um, we first came, as we, I told you, we had only the first floor, which used to be kept locked for us. Downstairs in the main room where Albert Tedering is, when we came uh, the second time, uh, Kolanda, you know, Kolanda used to stay there. And in the corner room here, Nipendra, Dr. Nipendra used to stay there. And the room, which is a little covered and rather warm, used to be kept only for Darshan visitors if mother was in need of a room. Otherwise it was too cramped up to give to anyone. One year, um, a gentleman with his daughter, do you know Durga Di? Durga Di who used to work in the, she's in the care unit now. She and her father had come and they were in that corner room. There were no fans at that time. 
So my mother told me, see, it is very warm in that room. We have a table fine, you take it to him. So when I took it to him, he said, no, no, I don't need anything. I said, no, my mother is just leave it here. So he's, he, they used to all call my mother Ilabodi or Iladi. So that young man said, Ilabodi, Eki Kolan, what have you done? So my mother said, no, it is very warm. You keep it as long as you are here as a visitor. Do you recollect memories of when mother visited his house? Who else came with the mother and what did mother do here? When mother visited the house? She visited the house in 1953. Who else came with her? Huh? Who else came with her? Um, as usual, uh, Pavitrada was with her. Um, it is a, it is a, an interesting story. We didn't know. I didn't know Mother would visit. So, or Mother would come in. I was coming back from the tennis round with my sister, and I suddenly saw, we saw the door, both the doors ajar, open. I said, well, what has happened? Mother walked from the table, uh, from the playground to the house. She walked to the house and she uh, visited the place and um, wasn't it that year she had, uh, I have forgotten the detail because she had come twice. Oh, the two, two, the door ajar was uh, for uh, the little French boy Arjun, who had a very bad stomach ache, and at that time that side used to be my brother's clinic. So mother had come to see what had happened to him and see my doctor brother examine him. That's when the two doors were open. Mm. Otherwise, when uh, she had come for visiting the house, it was uh, it was normal. She had told me, in fact that uh, she would be visiting the house that evening. Don't keep anything, don't rearrange anything, leave everything like that. Mm. But uh, we being uh, human, uh, when I told my mother she was doing some uh, sewing at her sewing machine or something, but uh, mother did like the house and the housekeeping, especially she liked the garden, little garden that was made most unexpectedly and each pillar had a creeper. Mm. Hope, uh, I think one was uh, mental honesty, these mm. two I remember. The other two I can't quite remember, they were trailed up along the pillars and it looked very nice because it reached the top veranda. My mother said about Nolini Sen, in Sevrema Fair and Zarta, he really knows how to make a garden. Mm. <laughs> you had mentioned the uh, Qurani huh? and uh, I knew him in 1960 but not before. Do you have any recollections of Purani? Purani ji, we have recollections of him. When mother used to play table tennis, he was a very enthusiastic table tennis player. He used to spend quite some time playing table tennis. He would um, be in Dhoti. No, he would be in Dhoti and Punjabi. Dhoti would be tucked up and he'd play table tennis. And um, quite um, clearly, he, I'd gone to see him one day saying, uh, I'm going on a visit to Tanjore Temple. Please give me. He was a he was a storehouse of knowledge where Indian art and architecture 
because he had gone on a tour on giving lectures on Indian art in Africa. So I'd gone to ask him and he said, um, well, you know, there used to be temple cities. So you are going to visit Tanjore. Tanjore temple is one of the first structured temples in India. Before that you had monolithic temples like you have in Mamalapuram, you know, they would scoop in the rock and form a structure. So 12th century AD, just like that, he gave me the whole thing on spot. I was standing near his door and he was he had come up to the door to ask me what, what is it. And uh, then he said there used to be temple cities in uh, India, all that the temple was in need of, sandalwood, flowers, um, other fruit offerings. Uh, so vendors and all would be arranged in a special place. The, everything was spotless clean. And um, usually when you enter, you have the Nata Mandir, the place where the Devadasi would dance for the deity and the priests would be around. So for the Tanjore temple, he had told me also that it was the first structured temple and what was very interesting is that it had all the three deities, I think, Shiva, Vishnu and uh, Brahma, of course, you don't have separately. So, but it was the first structured temple, and so he was uh, that an enthusiastic um, uh, physical education man, because he had introduced a great deal of physical education during. Uh, during the freedom struggle times in Gujarat. So he it is who had introduced here the Indian wrestling pit. We have photograph of him with Vishnuji, I think, yes. doing wrestling to show mother what is Indian wrestling. We have him for uh, uh, the very first exhibition we had when Medananda's library was in the school premises. There's a photograph in the bulletin where he is showing mother the Nataraja, which Bindo has explained in Foundations of Indian Culture as an extraordinary statue. So he is explaining to mother that we have a photograph of that. He's the one who organized the, that first exhibition on Indian art. Apart from that, he was um, very friendly and interested in all those who wanted to do some asanas. We did asanas with Ambubhai, but it was Puraniji who really always encouraged it. And he was a Vedic scholar also. He was very strong and he had an extraordinary, um, how shall I put it, honest about the ashram and sensitivity uh, for Indian, Indian culture also here. And um, I remember I told you having gone to uh, be briefed about our visit to Tanjore, but otherwise also he he Anu Anu Purani is his daughter, so Anu and I were quite close because I became one of her, one of her main students. Um, you know Chandra 
uh, Ravi Bala and all Chiban Patel's mm. um, uh, sister. Chandra and I were her best students. I was in the senior group and Chandra was in the next group. So because of Anupurani and all, um, I came also in touch with Puranuji by that much. That's all I would know about him. You have not told yeah. anything about your brother. Tell something about your brother. My brother? Yeah. Dr. Shatavya? Yeah. <laughs> I think I should show a few photographs next time and talk to you about it. He we, worked in Jitme, no? He was the head of Yeah. Uh, uh, he was uh, assistant professor of surgery there. But when he went to England for his specialization in a we he had left, he, we have a photograph of that in 1946. And mother was very particular that he should go by boat. So mother said, because of the change of climate, you have to take it slowly on your body. <laughs> so, and he had written to us, he had sent a postcard from, from Aden in uh, just the Suez, Suez Canal and uh, we were very keen on receiving some photographs and picture postcards from him at that time. And as soon as he came to know that we were playing table tennis and I was uh, quite promising in it, he sent me, sent us two bats, you know, special bats of table tennis, one for Chitradi and for me, and one, another one for me. So <laughs> he was always uh, quite attached to the family, and he was more uh, close to the uh, parent family because our family <clears throat> is a family of doctors, you know. My grandfather was settled in in Delhi and he was also, a, he was a doctor. My uncle, two uncles were doctors. <laughs> my, my aunt, uh, my uncles, the one who was a Farsiers, his wife was also a doctor, and uh, so we were all a family of doctors, and we had a cousin sister who became a doctor. So we were all doctors around, and... Uh, so you didn't take up that line? No, <laughs> I didn't take up that line, um, but Chitradi was half in it almost when we were doing our high course and we used to laugh because there was a prediction that in the family when there are two daughters one goes in for art one goes in for science you know? and it so happened with my cousins also my uh, we have two two cousin sisters one is a doctor and the other a artist so we will talk about it perhaps later. Yes, we no, we, we've run almost an hour today, and we don't want to tire you more. Um, could you give us two or three lines from Savitri? Sure. I give you the opening lines. It was the hour before the gods awake. Across the path of the divine event, the huge foreboding mind of night, alone in her temple of eternity, lay stretched immobile upon silence's march. Almost one felt a pain impenetrable in the somber symbol of her eyeless muse, the abysm of the unbodied infinite, a fathomless zero occupied the world.